All right, let's find our seats, please, please. <laughs> Hello. Hello, everyone. Yay, glad y'all are here, right? That's how we clap in the deaf culture. I hope y'all had a, a good time downstairs eating during the lunch, right? That was fun, yeah. yeah. And then you went home and took a nap. <laughs> Who went and took a nap, right? Some of you guys did. <laughs> wake up now, time to wake up. Now, um, I was chatting with some people downstairs during the uh, fellowship and the lunch and they're like wow it's so quiet everyone's so quiet you can hear everyone breathing <laughs> that's okay that's fine <laughs> you survived <laughs> that is how it feels to be deaf you can't hear much so now I want to say welcome again thank you all for being here and we're going to open in prayer so let's go ahead and pray now Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to have deaf awareness uh, today and now this afternoon, it's part two, and we're excited about this, and we, the deaf have been uh, excited to expose the hearing people to the deaf culture and the hearing people that they're able to learn and uh, be around us today, and we're all able to interact, and we're all one family together. We thank you for that, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to, you know, have the Bible, and in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so is there a first-time visitor here tonight? If you want mind raising your hand, please. If anyone's a first-time visitor, we have a, we'll give you a card um, that you can fill out, please, and uh, just hold that until after the service is over, and you can exchange your card in the, out in the foyer at the table out there, um, and you can exchange it for a gift, and... Uh, are there any other first time visitors? Just raise your hand. I don't want to miss your hand. Okay, so thank you for coming. I'm glad you're here, first time visitors. And um, it's going to be fun tonight. It's going to be a little different here tonight because it's the deaf culture service. And I'll explain a little bit more about that and you'll understand what that's like, the deaf culture. and. Um, next week, we'll go back to normal services, <laughs> the, and he, the hearing will take charge, but <laughs> today is the deaf. So we're going to have the choir come on up, please. Yes. The deaf choir. Okay, so as you can see for the deaf choir, there's no piano, there's no sound, nothing. And that's what the deaf choir tends to be like. So... We're going to go ahead and get this started. Look to the cross of the Lamb of God. Lay all your guilt on him. Freely his life flood. He sacrificed. Paying the debt of your sin. Come to the cross. Upon Calvary, 
gaze on the scene anew. Turn from your sin to the Savior. There Jesus waits for you. Stand by the tomb where his body lay. Hear how the mourners cry. If they but knew why the Savior came, Jesus left heaven to die. Come to the cross <clears throat> upon Calvary Gaze on the scene anew. Turn from your sin to the Savior. There Jesus waits for you. Kneel at the throne of your risen Lord. Death now has lost its sting. Thanks be to God for the victory. Hail to your conquering king. Amen. Come to the cross upon Calvary. Gaze on the scene anew. Turn from your sin to the Savior. And there Jesus waits for you. Amen. Chad Boak. I want to thank the choir again for singing this afternoon. So now I'm going to introduce Chad Bogue. He's going to come and he's going to give you a history about uh, deaf ministry. And um, uh, he's going to also explain a little bit about salvation and give you more information about that. So thank you. I'd like to take a time, a moment to talk to you all about Andrew Foster. Um, who is Andrew Foster? All right, well, he uh, was a missionary to Africa, and he was the first deaf missionary from America to Africa, and we'll say more about him. You see, okay, here he is. There's, there's a picture of him there. Born in the States here, born in America, um, and grew up, and just from a, from a young age had a vision and a desire to go to Africa. Um, you know, he didn't get a lot of support from churches like a lot of missionaries do nowadays. His own home church was about the only church that supported him, but he stepped out on faith and went and went. This is a little description of his life. He was born in 1925 and died in 1987. Um, he was born in Alabama. Really went through a hard life then, of course, especially being a black man and growing up in that culture. Um, but overcame a lot, was just an overcomer. And then, then he moved to Michigan when he was 11 years old and started going to school with an aunt that he was living with and began to grow in his education. And then finally discovered a church where he heard the gospel freely and got saved, got born again. He ended up going to Gallaudet University, which is the only liberal arts deaf university on the planet for deaf people. Um, as you see up there, and he was there from 1954, 1955, 1950s. Majored in education, and uh, when he finished in school, he graduated in 1955. Um, he kind of went to his plans of being a teacher, an educator, but God worked on his heart and called him to be a missionary. And in 1957, <clears throat> he went to Ghana, Africa, and he started a, a church and then a school. Uh, and that was his plan, and little did he know it would get bigger than what he had planned. And then he went on to Nigeria, and he went on to different countries, and his ministry began to infiltrate and just grow and grow and grow. 
as you see up here, he actually established 29 deaf schools around Africa throughout his life. It's a pretty amazing testimony there. And uh, Foster's influence in Africa to have the gospel and education for the deaf has continued to grow and grow and grow. Um, he gave a lot of deaf people in Africa the opportunity for education, which would then give them even the better opportunity to hear the gospel. He had such an impact on young children especially because the attraction to get them to come to his ministries was education. And then once they could learn to read and get a, some just a basic education, he would then be able to present the gospel to them. He, uh, he influenced them to use the same kind of sign language as American Sign Language. That's why you'll see American Sign Language a lot of times in a lot of the African countries. Um, and it's pretty amazing because I, even when I, Chad, was in college, I met a deaf uh, person from Africa while I was in college. And we began to talk. And, and, of course, he was good at ASL and found out that even he had indirectly been impacted by the work of Andrew Foster. Sadly, though... 1987, he was in. He died in a plane accident. He went to heaven. But wow, it's amazing that his legacy, his influence, continues to spread and leave a lasting impression on the numerous countries on the continent of Africa. Again, he faced a hard life. Faced a hard life here in the states. Faced a hard, hard times in Africa, but just kept on going. He had that same, I'm not going to quit attitude in America, <clears throat> carried it over to the countries in Africa. And to this day, we wanted to feature him and just say, you know what? Look at this deaf man who was an overcomer. And many people call him the father of deaf education in the country of, in the continent of Africa. His favorite verse or his life verse, being a deaf man himself, was Isaiah chapter 29, verse 18. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. And the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. Wow. His goal was to make sure he could bring the light so that people could get an education and just enough education to understand their Bible so they could get their Bible and then learn salvation and get motivated to spread the gospel. Instead of deaf people sitting around in isolation, never knowing what their purpose in life was, he impacted hundreds and hundreds of deaf people and still to this day is still talked about as an amazing influence on deaf people in the continent of Africa. And now the challenge should be taken to us, and we should take it to heart. It's our time now, and it's our job to stay motivated, to be a faithful witness, to carry on the vision that this man had. He also had a desire to have a perpetuity and continue to see it in the future generations where the gospel would continue to be spread. And as is already mentioned, again, his legacy is still alive, <clears throat> continues to carry on. People really respect and honor him and, and, uh, and support the vision that continues on. His ministries are actually still in place and now has over 30 schools that have been directly and indirectly started by him in the countries of Africa. And you see, again, as already mentioned, hundreds of Hundreds and hundreds of deaf children have received the gospel and also got an education. And uh, we love to think about the fact that he was a, was a pioneer missionary and he actually became an advocate for the deaf there. And because of his influence in Africa, he brought also a lot of deaf from Africa to America. And uh, he actually allowed, brought deaf people to Gallaudet University, and they actually named an atrium on the campus there after him called the Andrew Foster Atrium in honor of him, a Christian missionary on a secular university campus because of the impact he had in bringing so many deaf students from Africa to America so that they could get educated at Gallaudet University. He was a part of living loud, living loud, meaning making a big difference. And by the way, one person can make a big difference. Never forget that. And just learning that one man said, I'm not going to quit. And his life became loud, even as a deaf person. And so, well, you can't, you can't do it. There's, there's never been a deaf missionary. What? You're going to go to Africa? Are you kidding me? There's no way you're going to make it. And all those things just 
drove him. And when he got there and he started winning souls, he said, oh, my goodness, there's no way I'm going to quit this. And he kept on going and kept on going. And his life was loud, even being a deaf person, living loud. And he became that pioneer missionary that we still talk about and revere even now and respect and honor because of his passion to get the gospel to people who were actually hungry for education at first. He also became a very huge advocate for the deaf in that country so that people could maybe the governments and, and, and the hearing people in those countries could understand that deaf people can do some things. They can learn. They can succeed. And he kept that up until the day of his, pass, of his passing. And even to 2022, even though he's been gone in 1987, his life continues to, to still make an impact on people's lives. And, and the very fact that I'm sharing this with you tonight, and now we need to be motivated by that. And we all need to continue to, to make a difference in this world. So thank you so much for your time. And we appreciate the legacy of Andrew Foster. Thank you, Chad Bo, for that and teaching us uh, about the history of that man and the education and the ministry that he had really touched our hearts. So now we're going to have a song by the kids, the deaf kids and the CODA, child of deaf adults. <clears throat> They're going to get involved. So come on up here, kids. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> okay. Now I'm gonna hand the song or hand it over to them. They're gonna sing for us. And uh, coda. What does that mean? That means child of a deaf adult. And um, um, also there's goda, which is a grandchild of a deaf adult, and they're involved too. So. Makes me proud parent, and also I you know there's proud grandparents here and uh, proud family. So we're going to let the kids sing now. <clears throat> God is so good. Amen. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He died for me. He died for me. He died for me. He's so good to me. He answers prayer, he answers prayer, he answers prayer, he's so good to me. I love him so, I love him so. I love him so, he's so good to me. I'll do his will, I'll do his will, I'll do his will. He's so good to me. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. He's so good to me. Precious. Yeah. Good job, guys. Woo! Yeah. That was a beautiful song. God, wow, he is so good. Praise the Lord.
Okay. Now I want to, again, as this morning, I want us to have the opportunity for the hearing and deaf to be able to meet each other, shake hands, say hi to your neighbor. Yeah, so go ahead and start greeting each other. Okay, deaf always drag it out. They don't go back to their seats when they're supposed to. <laughs> and hearing do that too. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Just kidding. Everyone's sitting down real fast. Awesome. Okay, so deaf are always, you know, running kind of late and stuff. <laughs> but anyways, I want to say thank you to Art. I really want to honor Art. <laughs> not paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> I want to honor you, Art. I want to say thank you. Um, um, Onward Christian Soldiers is a song that you always sang, and so oh, we're going to honor yeah. you now, and we have a video of you signing it, so I want all of us to go ahead and stand up, That's and we're cool. going to go along and sing this song, Onward Christian so Soldiers. Cool. So everyone ready? Just sing along with me. Copy me, okay? <clears throat> Marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. 
four. <gasps> Christ the royal master leads <coughs> against the foe. Forward into battle, see his banner go. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus going on before. Like a mighty army moves the church of God. Brothers, we are treading where the saints have trod we are not divided all one body we one in hope and doctrine one in charity onward christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. I want to share with you maybe what's considered a deaf joke, a little fun joke that I think you'll appreciate. Um, I'll uh, give credit to uh, a person by the name of Ben Jerishaw. Ben Jerishaw is the one who initially told this story in sign language, and I might modify it to Sean Campbell style, but uh, that's what I want to do tonight. So let's hear. Here, here, here we go. Let's go. Uh, just curious, um, do you all like McDonald's? Raise your hand if you like McDonald's. All right, we got a few McDonald's fans in here. Okay, yeah, so, so some of you are like, eh, okay, I see some McDonald's. I see you McDonald's fans. How about old Burger King? Burger King, where's our Burger King lovers? Yeah, Burger King, all right, we got a few Burger King folk in here. BK. What about, uh, let's see, Chick-fil-A. Yeah, we got a lot of Chick-fil-A folk in here. Uh-huh. Lots of Chick-fil-A folk, okay. So who's saying boo back there? Wow, someone's booing Chick-fil-A in church. Help us. All right, so now let's, uh, how about, I know, how about Carl's Jr.? I don't know if we have them around here, but Carl's Jr.? Nobody? Nobody's responding to Carl's Jr.? Okay, Hardee's, yeah. All right, let's go with Chick-fil-A. I think most hands raised are Chick-fil-A, all right? Oh, wait, somebody want Wendy's to be represented. Who likes Wendy's? Where are the Wendy's lovers? Where are the Wendy's fans at? Okay, okay. All right. In honor of Brother Art, we'll do Wendy's, okay? Because of Brother Art. Brother Art picked Wendy's, so we'll do Wendy's. Now, I want to see if you're hearing people catch what I'm doing, okay? This is a popular deaf joke, so you're going to have to watch and listen, okay? So, here we go. I'm a hungry man. I'm in my car. I'm driving. And I'm a hungry man. Remember that. I'm a hungry man. Man, my stomach's saying it's time to find a restaurant. BK, eh, forget Burger King. Uh, Carl's Jr., uh, nah, I ain't going to Carl's Jr. <laughs> I'm going to keep on driving, driving, driving. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I see something in the distance. Oh, that's a good old Wendy's. That's a new building. New build. Man, it looks like it's busy there. Man, it must be a new Wendy's. Oh, there's a sign that says grand opening. Okay. All right, I might check this out. You know, everybody likes new. Whoa, the line's long. People like new stuff. Oh, the line's too long. I'm too hungry. Do I need to wait? I'm in a little bit of a hurry. Uh, what should I do? Oh, there's a drive through Nobody's in the drive through Sweet. Okay. So I pull around the drive through and I come up. And I look at the big, you know, they have the menu display right there in the drive through and the little speaker there. And they have all the, the, the different menu items and the prices on the board. And, okay, I want that burger, and I want that fry, and I want that drink, and I want, oh, i got to get some Frosty. got to get a Frosty, right? Half chocolate, half vanilla Frosty right there. That's, what, that's what's on my mind right now. I'm going to get that, okay? 
And then there's a little speaker thing. What's that? What is that thing that looks like a speaker? What is that? Okay, I have a, I, you know, they have seeing eye dogs. I have a hearing trained dog. And the dog starts barking my order. Roof, 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 roof. And then I pull up to the uh, window. <laughs> and as I pull up to the window, there's the lady there with a the big old hairdo in the microphone there. And, and she's looking, and the car comes up. And there she is. How are you? <laughs> I say, I'm deaf. I gesture that I'm deaf. And she's like, uh, okay, wait. She turns up the volume. <laughs> May I help you? I said, uh, okay, no, ma'am, I'm like deaf, deaf, okay? I need pen, paper, I'm deaf, deaf, pointing to my ears. She's looking at, looking at confused, sees the order, sees that it's all garbled because the dog barked it in. So she, she says, okay, hold on. She takes the microphone out, hits the thing in, cleans it out, puts it back in, and says it again. How can I help you? And I look at my dog and say, and the dog starts barking. It's okay. Thanks, dog. Okay. I can't hear you, ma'am. I can't. Please write it down. And so she turns it all the way up. How may I help you? I mean, so loud that the car shook a little bit. Okay, okay, I am deaf. Again, here's a pen and paper. Please write down what you're saying to me. And her long hairdo, big hairdo. She, t <laughs> she breaks the meter, turning the volume all the way as loud as it can possibly go. Tries to fake smile. <laughs> no interpretation needed. <laughs> no interpretation needed. He, the dog pees the seat because it got so scared. <laughs> the manager comes up. <laughs> the line's lining up now and we're waiting on this deaf guy. What's going on? The manager's mad. The lady with the hairdo. She points, blames the deaf guy. I'm deaf. I've been trying to tell your lady I'm deaf, manager. I'm sorry. I'm deaf. The manager's like, oh. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> he's deaf. He was trying to tell you he's deaf. All right. My parents are deaf. All right. I'm a coda. I'm the manager. I'm a coda. How can I help you? What, what would you like to order? And I say, I want a burger, fries. I want half chocolate, half vanilla frosty, and some drink too. And how much is it? How much is it? And the coda says, okay, I got the order for you. I'm putting it in. <laughs> they bring all the food and all the drinks. And it's on me because of your hassle. And he send, it, send me on my happy way, and I leave free. Thank you so much, and I drive off. So the manager says, Man, look at how long this line is. We gotta hurry it up. We gotta catch it up. Be careful next time. You know the deaf man. You know use a pen and paper. Da da da. Whatever. Trying to educate the lady. He leaves. The woman fixes her hair. An old woman pulls up to the window. <laughs> and the lady behind the counter with a do in the window. What they do? In their microphone, says, "Oh." I forgot the volume thing. Wait, I should, I'll talk quietly. How am I help you? No interpretation needed. Her, gra her glasses crack, her wig falls off. It was too loud. <laughs> and the, the lady behind the counter is like, oops. Takes the microphone and walks away. Okay, and that was a funny joke and funny story. Thank you for letting me tell you that. So now I'm going to welcome my wife back up here, Michelle. She's going to sing again for you. 
So thank you. <laughs> this is the same song by Matthew West um, with me on your mind. I've read the words in red, how you leave the 99, and you go searching for the one that's missing. And that missing one was me, and I was on your mind. And the prodigal son who ran, <clears throat> leaving his home behind, the part where the father came running to meet his son, did you say that with me on your mind? Who am I that the king of the world would give one single thought about my broken heart? And who am I that the God of all grace wipes the tears from my face and says, come as you are? You paid the price you took the cross, you gave your life, and you did it all with me on your mind. Oh, oh, with me on your mind. Just knowing that you're mindful of me, just knowing that you call me your child, it's flooding my soul with unspeakable hope. Thank you so much, Lord, that it's me on your mind. Who am I that the king of the world would give one single thought about my broken heart? And who am I that the God of all grace wipes the tears from my face and says, come as you are. You paid the price. You took the cross. You gave your life. And you did it all with me on your mind. Oh, with me on your mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, that I was on your mind. I read the words in red of a heavenly home on high. You're preparing a place where the sorrows are raised. And when I stand before you, I will find that all along it was me on your mind. And who am I that the king of the world would give one single thought about my broken heart? <coughs> and who am I that the God of all grace would wipe the tears from my face and say, come as you are? You paid the price. You took the cross. You gave your life and you did it all with me Amen. on your mind Amen. oh with me on your mind Amen. oh oh wow with me on your mind I'm going to um, introduce our host now, Pastor Randy. He's going to come. I really want to emphasize that, um, you know, he travels a lot and um, he um, is able to preach a lot in different ministries and in deaf ministries. And I'm so thankful for the support he's been to this ministry. And again, like I said, the hearing that are involved here and uh, that just I'm thankful that he travels and has that ministry. So. Um, now we're going to let him come and speak.
Okay, thank you all. Um, they've done a very good job today. I'm looking forward to next year. We're going to make this an annual part of our calendar. And um, next year, we're going to have a guest speaker from another uh, state, Brother Nick or someone else. Maybe a deaf man would be better. But that's awesome. So thank you again for Briella for uh, helping with the voice interpreting and for the singing. <clears throat> 25 and a half years ago, I moved to Missouri. And I, I hadn't become a pastor of this church. I hadn't even gotten m married. And um, <clears throat> I got an interp or, uh, interpreting job, and I became a certified licensed interpreter. And uh, I could work as a professional interpreter. And, you know, back then I interpreted a lot, but now I don't interpret as much because I'm pretty busy. But the first deaf person I ever interpreted for is here tonight, Faith. Faith, up here in the front. And her mom's there in the back. Hello, good to see you. It touches my heart. It's always good to see them. The first person I ever interpreted for in Missouri, not in my life, I've had interpreted many times, but in Missouri is Faith. And I'm glad that she's here with us tonight. And all these years later, she came again, and I'm proud of her, and it's a blessing to see her. So I'm going to call Travis and Grant to come up here. So we're going to be in Mark 7, Mark chapter 7, verse 31 to 35. So, now, the first thing I want us all to, you know, confess or notice or be honest about is that we all agreed that, Grant made it up, <laughs> did he make it up, or is he fine? Okay, good, <laughs> glad he didn't fall again. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, so, <laughs> so, some people are clapping back there. <laughs> okay, so. We all need uh, can confess or admit that you read the Bible sometimes and, you know, God's doing all these great things. And But sometimes, sometimes you read and you're like, what? What is going on in this story? You know, God, you just did something that's a little odd. You do some strange things, right? And um, this story is one of those stories. I love this. This is my dad's favorite story in the Bible because Jesus heals a deaf man in this story. And the Bible says in verse 31, it says, and again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came unto the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. And they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears and he spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he said, Epetha, that is, be opened. Wow. So Jesus, Jesus, pay attention here, Jesus invented the wet willy. <laughs> the Bible says it right there. He put his fingers into his ears. So Jesus is the one who did, invented that. <laughs> so now, as I look at this, it makes me so proud of our deaf ministry because it shows you that Jesus, um, most of the miracles he did in front of huge crowds of people, right? But Jesus took this man alone. He had his own one-on-one -on -one encounter with this, away from the multitude, which I feel it's almost a very unique ministry that the deaf ministry is. And um, uh, I don't know if Jesus signed with this man. My dad likes to think so. It was, it's possible. But one thing I want to notice is that it's a very unique ministry because all the other ministries, you know, there's all kinds of different missionaries and ministries. They all come. They speak different languages. They write different languages. They read different languages, um, you know, from Japan, from, you know, other countries, Africa. As Chad Bogue was, he's a Sunday school teacher here. He helps teach there. He does a great job. I'm so proud of you. Love you. Um, but you see different uh, ministries, different missionaries. But signing, sign language is so unique, right? So I want you to look at this example, okay? So Travis, he's a coda, child of a deaf adult, which means he acts like, he's gonna act like the deaf man in this story. Now Grant, I'm so sorry, Jesus, <laughs> but Grant will act like Jesus, just for this. Jesus won't fall on the steps though, Jesus won't fall, but <laughs> Grant's still gonna act like Jesus right now, okay? So the Bible says that Jesus calls this man aside, so just kind of go over there a little bit. So now, the Bible says the first thing that he did is he put his fingers into the man's ears. <laughs> and then the Bible says he spit. <laughs> and then he touched his tongue. 
<laughs> now, now, I want you to look at this. Jesus didn't mind being close to this man in his personal space. One thing about, one big difference between the deaf and the hearing is the deaf are a lot more, you know, touchy, affectionate. They love affection. They're more than the hearing. In fact, some hearing people are like, you know, ooh, you don't really like hugs. You have a hard time hugging your own husband and wife, honestly, right? Um, so hearing people by nature tend to be more, you know, stiff when it comes to hugs. But uh, deaf people, they're never stiff, you know. Most of the, you know, hearing you hug, <laughs> they're all stiff and they don't like hugs. But, oh, deaf people love to hug. My wife, she wasn't used to that when we first got married. And Wow, everyone hugs, every, you know, deaf man, deaf woman, they all hug, they love to hug, and I understand it can be under misunderstood, but remember, the Bible says that we can, we're, we're supposed to greet each other with a holy kiss, right? <laughs> At least the deaf aren't kissing each other, right? <laughs> so, hugging, that's a little better, but um, my wife sometimes, she's Shocked when we would go to family gatherings when we were first married. My sister would say, oh, I forgot to buy, you know, potato chips for the dinner tonight for the football game, the Gators game. Ah, oh, man, I'm going to go buy it. I'll go run to the store and buy some chips real fast. She'd go around and hug me, hug Nick, hug my wife, hug her mom and dad, and then leave to go to the store. And my wife was like, why did she just hug us all? She's going to the store for five minutes. I'm like, well, that's deaf culture. And my wife's like, that's so weird. Then we go to her side of the family for Christmas, and I try to hug all of her, uh, all those Yankees up there. Yankees, her Yankee family, they're all stiff. <laughs> you hug them, and they're like stiff as a board, <laughs> trying to hug them. <laughs> feel like, um, you know, I'm hugging a piece of plywood or something. They're just so stiff, and it's just different cultures, right? But I want to inform you that Jesus, I think he's more like the deaf culture. Let's be honest. He doesn't mind getting right there in your face. I mean, look at this story. He's like. <laughs> right? We don't like a lot of people. You know, when you talk and someone's getting right in your face. <laughs> right? And this church has a few of those people. Let This church, and you know who you are. <laughs> Stop getting my face. I can hear you from a distance. You don't have to get so close to me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But that's part of the deaf culture. And I, in airplanes, and I love flying southwest. And um, you have A, B, C groups to board. A group always, you know, sits on the aisle or sits in the window. B, you know, you can usually. But C is stuck. <laughs> there, C stands for the center. <laughs> you have to sit in the center, the middle seat, right? And so... But I love teasing sometimes. I'll be on the airplane. I'll be bored and I'll pretend like I'm going to sit in the middle seat. I'll be like, oh. And the people's reactions on the window in the aisle seat, they're like, oh, no, not the big boy, not the big boy. No, no. Don't want me to sit in the middle because they know I'll take up a lot of space and sprawl out. They do not want that. They want more space, right? Um, and the same is with Jesus, though. He wants to be in our personal space, which means we can learn something from the deaf. So watch again. He put, Jesus puts his fingers into the deaf man's ears. And then he spits. And then he touches his tongue. <laughs> That's what Jesus does. Good job, guys. Good job. Give him a hand. So I want to give you three things that we can learn about the deaf. Three that we can learn about this from the story about the deaf. Um, first, we're going to talk about the place. The Bible says that Jesus came again to the coast of Tyre and Sidon, uh, he came into the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. So there was a place. Okay, so first, place. It's really important for us to notice. Thank God there is a place for the deaf here in Jefferson City. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That the deaf all over, um, like mid-Missouri, can come to this place and meet Jesus. And I'm going to be honest with you tonight. I'm going to be a little blunt about religion. I am fed up with so many churches trying to, you know, reach the deaf ministry, but they never ask the deaf how to do, or they never know how to do the right way. They always force them to do it their way. If it's force, force. No, no, no. We need to find what the deaf want, what the deaf need, what the deaf like, what their preferences, their choices, right? And I love preaching in black churches. I do. I do. I love preaching in black churches. Black people worship, and they say amen more than the white, the dead white people, right? White people just sit there. <laughs> And black people, you know, get, they're getting their praise on. 
getting a little dance and the deaf people you know <laughs> that's how the deaf people get it <laughs> so little different cultures right different worlds but Sometimes we think our way is the right way. No, no, we need to realize that the deaf have their culture. We need to respect their culture. I can't force them to become hearing. No, Jesus understood that. And Jesus didn't go and force this deaf man to become as a hearing culture. No, Jesus matched his needs. Jesus took him aside and talked to him. He spent time with him. And Jesus knew that this deaf man had his own culture. And the woman at the well in Samaria, she had her own culture. And we need to understand the man who's a missionary in Africa, wow, he, they had their own culture. Culture, we have to understand that God is not an American. He's not. God is not a hearing white American. <laughs> He's not a hearing white American. So we sometimes need to understand that we have to know that there is a place. A place. So number two, we need to notice the case. The case. I love this. It's, the Bible says in verse 32, And they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech, and they beseech him to put his hand upon him. So this is the case. They said, Hey, Jesus, this man, he's deaf. He's my friend. Maybe he's my brother. He's my cousin, my aunt, my uncle. I don't know, but he's deaf. He's my deaf friend, and I, I love him. Please, please, just touch him. I want you to help my family, help my case. BBC can I make the case that we must support the deaf ministry? If we don't, Wendy's will get their order wrong. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. But remember this morning they were talking about 98% of the deaf in this world have never heard the gospel. That should break our hearts. Our hearts should grieve for that. We should get on our knees and weep for the deaf. We hear, hear the gospel. We've heard it so many times, every day, all the time. We're so, our hearts have become so hard to it. And many deaf people all around the world. I, hey, listen, I preach in the Philippines. I went to a deaf camp there. 37 deaf people showed up. 35 of those deaf people got saved. You know who didn't get saved? The deaf man and the deaf woman who invited me there, who were already saved. Those are the only two people who didn't get saved. 35 out of those 37 got saved. I went to the Bahamas to preach. And they heard that I could sign, and they brought me to a group of 30 deaf on a Friday night, and I preached there. And guess how many of those people got saved? I think 18 of them got saved in one service. They are like, I've never heard this before. What? I never, please, I, I want to hear about this. And we hear it, 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 and our hearts have become hard to it. And now we hear it. I heard, here's that, that 98% of the deaf population has not heard the gospel, and we're just like, oh, no, that should break our hearts, and I want to make the case. Um, I want to be a lawyer tonight. I want to present to you the hearing of BBC. doesn't matter if you learn signs or not, but please pray, pray that God will touch and raise up more preachers to the deaf, more ministries to the deaf, that people will have more hearts for the deaf, and we'll see more souls saved. It's interesting that the Bible said Jesus, um, he says till all the world has heard the gospel. He won't come to all the world has heard the gospel, right? It's interesting that now it's possible that the deaf are the last mission field for Jesus, for us to reach before Jesus comes back. Wow. So number one, place. Number two, I want to make the case. And number three, space this space. So you notice the Bible says in Mark 7, uh, 33 and 34, and G he took him aside from the multitude. So he took him aside. And he put his fingers into his ears. He spit. He touched his tongue. The Bible says it. And Jesus was in his personal space. <laughs> you see Travis and Grant just a while ago. Travis was good. He accepted Grant doing all that. He stood there while Grant put his ears and fingers in his ear, spit on him. And the deaf man, did he protest in this story? No, he never protested. He accepted what Jesus did to him. The problem with many of us today and Americans today is Jesus is coming. He's coming to us and, oh, yeah, it's fine. But, oh, he touches my ears. Oh, okay, but he spits. Oh, no, no, no. And we miss the miracle. The miracle doesn't happen if the deaf man would have protested and you know, push Jesus away. No, he welcomed Jesus into his personal space. Maybe it was awkward. Maybe it was strange. I mean, imagine you come to church tonight and you saw um, Hugh and 
uh, Brother Tim <laughs> taking turns touching each other's tongues. <laughs> Uh, can I touch your tongue? Oh, okay, no, touch mine. <laughs> oh, okay, my turn. You all would be like, what is wrong with those men? <laughs> They're crazy, right? <laughs> but, but my point is, this deaf man never protested. In my knowledge, maybe I'm wrong, I don't think any other story in the whole Bible um, has another man touching a tongue like this deaf man's story. Oh, oh, I remember Jesus. I remember a story in the Bible. You touch my tongue. It means something good's going to happen. No, he didn't know that, but he trusted, trusted, trusted Jesus. And Jesus did what only Jesus could do, a miracle. But the deaf man, he did not protest. He allowed Jesus to get into his personal space. He accepted it. So can I ask you a question tonight? Is Jesus in your personal space? See, when Jesus comes to our personal space, we don't just listen like at this morning with our ears and with our eyes, but oh, that's when we start listening with our hearts. And I will leave like this deaf man left, a changed person. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, is Jesus in your personal space? So, hearing, heads bowed, eyes closed. Hello, Pastor Randy Dignan here of Bible Baptist Church in Jefferson City, Missouri. I'm going to take a moment and express to you what our main vision and purpose is of this ministry. You see, much of this world today has a question. It's a question that was asked in John chapter 3 by one person. It's a question that is asked by the masses, but when you really think about it, it's really a question we all have to come to grips with, face to face with, one on one in our lives, sometime in our life. The question is this, where will I spend eternity? And that question was asked by a religious leader by the name of Nicodemus in John chapter 3. He approached Jesus Christ in the middle of the night and had a question about spiritual matters. Well, good thing for Nicodemus, he came to the right person at the right time because Jesus Christ is the answer in spiritual matters. You see, many of us have questions about that, and man has tried in many of its efforts to answer that question with their own ideas and philosophies. We've tried to come up with ideas on how to get us to heaven, how to confirm our way to heaven. But the fact is we've got to find out what God says about eternal things. And that's why asking Jesus Christ that question is so vital. Because when you ask Jesus a question, you get the answer. And as the question was asked, Jesus answered simply this. You must be born again. In John chapter 3, that's what he said to Nicodemus. And that's the same thing he says to you and to me, even today. You see, God is God of this universe, but he's not everybody's father. What does that have to do with John chapter 3? Well, think about this. We all have birthdays. We all are physically born under this physical planet. Or else you wouldn't be able to watch me or I wouldn't be able to sign to you right now or talk to you at this time. But God, being a spiritual being, knew that though our bodies are temporal, our spiritual part of us, our spiritual anatomy of us, is an eternal thing. And so God says, I'm more concerned about the spiritual issues. And that's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you and me 2,000 years ago and live again three days later so that you and I can have a spiritual birthday and know for sure that heaven is our home. Well, that leads to the next question. Why do we need a spiritual birthday? Well, it's simple. We're all sinners. We've all broken God's law and God's commands. But God loves us so much so that he let Jesus Christ become the substitute for your sin and my sin. So that if we recognize and admit that we are sinners, we can then trust in Jesus Christ as our substitute. And more so than that, our personal Savior. And know that on top of our physical birthdays, we have a spiritual birthday now. In that God becomes our father. We become his sons, daughters. We become his children and we know we're going to go to heaven someday. My friend, it's very simple. It's not about what the church says or what I have ideas about or what you have ideas about. It's finding out what God says directly to you and me. And he did it right there in the Bible. And in particular, John chapter 3, when Jesus says, you must be born again. If our church can help you with that question, if you have any questions about that, we can give you some answers. We'd be glad to help you in any way we can. Again, Pastor Randy, personally thanking you for watching the message. And again, if there's anything we can do for you, let us know. God bless and make it a great day.